Hi guys, long time no see. I bet you've been wondering what I've been up to, and I'll get to that later. But first, I'm gonna distract you with this project. Overwatch has blown up. My girlfriend and I play all the time, and her favorite character is Roadhog. So I decided to make her his hook in the Toa skin to work on my prop making skills and to prove my eternal love for her. In case you didn't know, Roadhog's weapon is used to be thrown at enemies just to pull them back in and then shot with his shotgun. The reason why I painted the hook gold and white is because she wanted the golden gun version. It also just so happens to match the theme of her makeup table. Okay, enough talk, let's get started. Oh wait, make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can hear my exciting announcement. I started with my fancy full-scale drawing and some tracing paper to split the hook up into manageable patterns. Tweaked it a bit and then transferred it onto some cardstock since I needed four copies of each of these parts and cardstock is just much easier to trace. I ended up using my super awesome scroll saw to cut all these out, but you're more than welcome to use a knife as well. With a Dremel, I went through every piece and sanded off all these unnecessary bumps to a smoother surface, which allowed me to glue each of the four copies together, followed by the bigger chunks using my favorite contact cement. And then I was ready for some sculpting. The width of the hook thins out from the handle down to the end of the curl, so I used my belt sander to get that even taper. As for the bottom of the hook, I cut off the excess foam, drilled the hole, and then chamfered the edges a little bit. To avoid holding onto what felt like a straight up table leg, I started rounding off the handle and then the remaining corners of the inside of the hook. So the teeth on this hook are actually super thin, so to save myself some time, I drew out the bottom of each tooth, and then I used a knife to cut out the top and bottom layers of the foam, leaving the two middle ones in there. The middle line that I'm drawing right here is the hook's widest part, so from this line outward, I used the Dremel to help pop it out a little more. The next thing I worked on were the teeth. This took a while because there were quite a few of them, but it ended up being a lot of rounding off and then giving him a point that I was happy with. I forgot to film myself sculpting the face, but it was a smart idea to do this on a separate piece of foam, in case you mess up. And when I finished, I just glued it onto the handle. I drew out all the cracks and thread holes throughout the entire hook making sure it looked as much like the in-game hook as possible. To give all these details life, I used a wood burner. It's easy to use and it yields quick results. You just have to be careful not to burn yourself or to burn too much of the foam away. The last thing you want is to restart after making it this far. For the fake thread holes, I used a rounded tip attachment for the wood burner and only went about a quarter inch deep. I decided to not actually thread into the hook, but just to give the illusion that I did. You'll see what I mean later. I was missing the two triangles on the back of the handle, so I grabbed a few extra tooth scraps from earlier and then glued those together. After those dried, I stuck them onto the back of the handle, dremeled them into shape, and then added some swirls. To help prevent the foam from sucking up too much of the paint, I usually heat seal the entire surface followed by a few layers of Blasti Dip. I did almost forget the symbol on the forehead, so I added that and then eventually Blasti Dip the hook. I decided to hand paint the hook with some acrylic paint since the texture of the foam wouldn't allow me to tape off areas cleanly, and I also painted some strips of foam and some stars while I was at it. The easy part of this was the thicker white strip. That was simply wrapped around the handle and glued into place. The trickier part were the thin gold strips. These were cut into much smaller portions at about 45 degree angles and then glued from one pretend thread hole into the other. Using the rounded end of a paintbrush helped me hold the strips into place without burning my fingers. So I recommend using that as well. This part was a real pain in the butt, and it took a long time, but it was well worth it in the end. The repetitiveness of it almost became therapeutic at one point, but anyways, it gave the hook a much more realistic look and helped show that a lot of effort was put into the fine details. The last thing that needs to be added are the stars, and to do that I simply used the blueprint once again to help me mark where each of the stars went and they were just hot glued in place. And there it is, this golden beauty is all done and ready to hook the attention of every person at the next convention we go to. So you've probably been wondering why I have that weird border on some of the clips of this video. Well, it's because I've started streaming on Twitch. 
So, if I were you, I'd pause this video right now and follow me. Okay, so I'm sure it's obvious that I make prop related items during my Twitch streams. For example, this full scale drawing of the Roadhog hook, which also served as my blueprint for this build. And of course, this amazing hook that brought me back to you, amazing viewers. And finally, my son's mini Captain America shield. Not only do I do builds, but just recently Archie from Sneak Attack came over and we made a video of us baking a cake in the shape of a Yeezy. In celebration of hitting 100 followers on Twitch, my viewers thought it would be a great idea for Nikki to do my makeup live on Twitch. Count her like it's hot! And what's Twitch without a bit of gaming, honestly? So expect to see Nikki and I playing some Overwatch on there every now and then. But what you might be interested in is what I'm working on now. I've been helping my friend Allie work on her cosplay, and I've been making the armor that Katniss Everdeen wears in Mockingjay Part 1. So far, I've got the boot armor, the shin armor, the knee armor, and the chest. Big shout out to Alec for helping me get started on Twitch. You're awesome. I've started a project for myself for once, and I'm working on my first Overwatch cosplay, and that is Hanzo in the Okami skin. So for the costume itself, I'm working from the ground up, and so far, I've got one shoe done. Also, also, my current and all-time favorite project right now is creating a functional, but not deadly, bow. Hanzo's bow. Hanzo's Okami bow. Golden gun version. Guys, I mean, look. Look what I have done so far. I mean, look at this. I sculpted this handle built a skeleton, and when I pull the string, the ends fold in and spring back. And for portability, it unscrews at the middle so I can take this around with me in case I needed to travel. Because I've never been more into a project, there's gonna be plenty of more streams. So this is gonna be a Twitch exclusive build. So if you're gonna wanna watch me build this, make sure you're following me and turn on those notifications so you can come hang out while I build this. I stream a gazillion times more often than I post videos on here. The reason why I like Twitch so much is I can interact with everyone instantly. Not only am I answering your questions, but I get a lot of valuable feedback from viewers. So check me out, follow me on Twitch, and don't forget about my other social medias. I've been a lot more active on there as well. Shout out to Ashley and Crispy for teaching me the ways of Twitch and for pretty much going to all of my streams. And I can't forget about you, Devis. You've been there since the beginning. You're real MVP. Thanks again for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you on Twitch. See ya.